let's see. Let's get the, oh, yep, there we have picture. That's very cool. Check that out, right? There you go, X-Men 90. Oh, my God, the camera's on. Hey, everyone, Toysh is here, and today we're going to be checking out the fairly recent, newish, quote-unquote, the Marvel Legends X-Men 97 Wave 1 by Hasbro. And I have had these for a bit now, let's just say that. Was kind of waiting until the show premiered, <laughs> whenever that is supposed to be at this point. But we do have a Wave 2 on the way, so that's always cool. A couple new characters in that one, and then the usual X-Men staples. But in keeping with, let's say, Wave 1 today, this will definitely be fun. So you have X-Men 97. You got a big group shot right there. And the first figure we will look at is, of course, Bishop. A little bit of a redesign to Bishop from the original show, which... If you didn't know, X-Men 97 is based off the 90s. X-Men, the animated series. Couple accessories. He's got a gun. And on the back side, you can see it's mostly the same. You get to see the figure itself. You get to see just the various characters, which is a six-figure wave. But no Build-A-Figure, unfortunately. Which, I do wish that they would do more of that with these more retro card backs. I get a lot of people don't want to open them, but it's always nice. Next up is Rogue. Again, a little bit of a, a face redesign. Me thinks that the animation style for this is going to heavily resemble what you would see in like the What If series, right? So that's where I kind of think this is going. Again, you got a six-figure wave. You got the Rogue right there. Not a bad looking figure. Interesting to see how these will all stack up. And then you have Gambit, which not much of a redesign. Pretty much the same. Everything is just a little bit more streamlined. Kind of resembles... When you went from Batman the Animated Series to then the TNBA, but then if you also look at X-Men the Animated Series and they did that last fourth season, they simplified the animation a whole heck of a lot too. So he does have his card thrown hand. Not a whole lot of new in the box, but he does have a new head portrait. And then moving on, we of course have the Weather Witch herself, Storm, looking pretty good. This time around, pretty much the same costume, but she has a new Mohawkie sweet do. So... Not too shabby there. Interesting. couple extra hands. Again, not a whole lot in the boxes, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, we're left with two figures now. One being Magneto. He does have a bit of a, a different role, let's say, towards the end of the series. And it kind of looks like they're going to be continuing on with that storyline. When Charles Xavier got sick, he got sent to space. Now Magneto kind of is in control of the X-Men, so we're kind of waiting to see how that goes, plus Magneto won't have his usual digs, which I'm so glad they redid this figure, because I totally missed that three-pack with Quicksilver and the like, but now we have a Magneto that's not from the original Marvel Legends days or the Marvel Select, where he's kind of at a scale, right? <laughs> Minus the weird face as well. Same thing on the card back, you get the idea, Magneto, and plus the new Magneto's going to have that giant M costume, right? Go figure on why they chose that one. But the last figure of the wave is, of course, Logan Wolverine. And he looks pretty darn cool. I actually think that this is one of the best head portraits they've ever done for an animated Wolverine, as as well as the, the unmasked, because he always comes out looking like a granny for whatever reason. I like the colors, like everything about this. You got the two things, all that jazz. You get the idea. Wolverine. Let's go ahead. Let's get these open. X-Men 97 Marvel Legends Wave 1. Here we go. Now, did you really think the entire video was going to look like a VHS tape? No, I'm not going to do that to you. But while I have you guys here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Why? Well, we got old toys. We got new toys. We got daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So here's all six figures taken out of their packaging. Yes, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, they're a little light on the accessories. Not all of them, but ones that you would think, yeah, it might be a kind of a crucial element to have with a character with powers, right? Now, speaking of Storm, we have just a pair of fisted hands. Those are her only accessories. No lightning effects, nothing 
Nothing to call down the weather, right? Come on, we know you guys got those accessories. Now, I will say this, though. Storm does look cool, and I like the redesign with the mohawk. It's a little bit of the old-school animated series and then her mohawky look. I think it really translates well to plastic, and she has a really beautiful face to her. That face print tech or whatever they're using looks really good. Now, she doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of paint if any, largely a white costume. She does have her weather cape that hooks to her hands and through the back. It's kind of a taffeta crunchy cape. Although, because of the way they've situated it this time, it does allow for basically fluid movement, right? You never really have a problem with it. And like I said, it just hooks onto her hands, which you can remove if you pull the hands out. When you swap them, you get the idea. She does have some newly designed shoulder pads, the ones with the X's, not really any problems with those, and doesn't have anything in the way of, let's say, bicep swivel, but when you want to move the arms, the shoulder pads will move with you. The legs, the knees, everything is pretty standard, but one thing I like to point out here is the sleeves, the way they're sculpted. I really like the way that they did that. So that is purely Storm right there with those sleeves, but unfortunately, you can't get her arms all the way down to her side. You get plenty of head rotation. The back parts of the mohawk really won't hinder you all too much, but it's something that you kind of have to manually move around. It's not that big a deal. So overall, I would say that Storm looks pretty good, especially if you have a flight stand, but that's where the powers really would have come in handy. Otherwise, yeah, She's a pretty solid Storm action figure, and I'm curious to see where they're going to take the character in the new X-Men 97 show. Now, and moving on to Gambit. He is going to be one of those figures where, within all his accessories, his powers, we have seen them released prior in some way, shape, or form. That's not necessarily a bad thing, because if you're looking for a total package of all the powers and effects that you would need for a Gambit figure, look no further. And he displays rather nicely with all of these accessories, including the new card, which they've now changed to an Ace of Hearts from prior releases. So they have updated that. And of course, yes, his Gambit stick, which has a nice color to it, of which... I'm very happy to say on this release of Gambit, as opposed to, let's say, the Target release a few years ago now, he holds it nicely. It's in his hand. It's not falling through. So that's finally a nice update to old Gambit. And speaking of which, he has a updated head portrait. It's very much cartoony, borderline anime. I will say that. That's, again, not necessarily a bad thing. It's very stylistic, and I do appreciate it. He's going to be largely the same release that we have seen of Gambit figures. He's got some nice colors. He's very much the animated series, or at least what we're going to be seeing in the new X-Men 97 series. Like the brown coat, you get plenty of articulation out of him, and one thing I would have liked to have seen was just a few more hands with this character. Really kind of divvy it up, get a little bit more going, maybe hold the baton with two hands. Other than that, the jacket works with you. You got plenty of articulation, like I said. You have double-jointed knees, single-jointed elbows. The elbows are pinless, but the knees are not. Go figure, that would have been a nice update, right? So again, if you're looking for a Gambit figure, if you're new to Marvel Legends, or if you're a fan of the old X-Men the Animated Series, or hey, you're gonna get into X-Men 97, yes, I do think that this is a really cool looking Gambit. Overall, powers, effects, the articulation, everything about it, he really stands out, and he's one of my favorites of the wave. Now, moving on to Bishop. Now. He comes with a couple accessories, most of which are extra hands, which some of those hands I wish they would have gone to Gambit, right? Now, Bishop himself sporting a new look, a new updated look for X-Men 97. He's got the M painted on his face. It's really a great looking face sculpt, great looking paint. He really does stand out. And I like the body type that they have chosen. He just looks good and he's pinless and that's really nice. He does have weapon storage with his giant bishop gun, right, from the future. That's pretty cool. There's no paint on it. There's no wash. There's nothing like that. But he does have a trigger finger, which, of course, is appropriate. In fact, he comes with an extra hand that may as well be the same hand, but it's a little bit different. That's kind of an odd choice. But he holds it 
very nicely. And you can reach all the way back like he's pulling it out of the holster, or you can aim it at, let's say, Gambit if we're running that storyline again. But like I said, just the look of the figure, the colors, everything about it really does make, again, for a very cool looking bishop. Not necessarily saying I needed an updated bishop, but for the new animated series that's coming out, this is pretty darn nice. Now, you will have to align the thighs from time to time because he has that line designation on his uniform. He's got double jointed knees. He's got some boot rotation. And of course, you can get the feet going every which way with some peg holes on the bottom. So again, overall, it's pretty stylish. I totally dig this Bishop. He was not on the list of like, oh man, I gotta have this figure. And I really hope that sometime in the future, we're gonna get a shard figure to go with this Bishop because that really needs to happen. So Marvel Legends, if you're listening, put shard on that list because I'd love to see that. If you're wondering about the red bandana that doesn't come off, but dang it all, he displays oh so nicely. Now, moving on to Rogue. Again, very light in the accessories, although you kind of have to think, what are we really going to give Rogue in terms of accessories? So you have an ungloved hand and the gloved hand holding the glove. Hope I didn't mess you up on that one. But it works to the effect, and it's an effect that we have seen before. Maybe an extra head portrait, something like that. Maybe a screaming head. That would have been kind of cool. We have Rogue. Rogue has an updated look. And when I first saw this figure out of the package, I was like, I know I've seen that before. It totally reminds me of her appearance in Spider-Man the Animated Series, oddly enough. Now, this will be what she looks like going forward in X-Men 97. And just to point out, because I think a lot of people get confused, the jacket on her is more of a greenish brown. If you look at the show, it's those weird, odd color settings for animation. It's fine for what it is. I also like that they've now sculpted these bands into her boots. She's got peg holes. Overall, it's a pretty stylish, pretty simplistic figure, but it totally works. And again, it's not going to necessarily be the ideal head portrait face that I think of for Rogue because that last release was pretty darn cool. But in conforming to what we're knowing for X-Men 97, they've really captured that new updated look. You got the whites on the brown hair, the jacket. Everything works pretty good. She doesn't have any bicep swivel. She's got single jointed elbows, but she's got double jointed knees and like I said, if you get all these characters that fly a flight stand, which would be handy dandy if Marvel Legends would throw that in the box, huh? Flight stand? She looks pretty cool flying around your shelf. But in reality, if you get her just in that right sweet spot position, right? It will look good just kind of hovering, just when she's about to do battle or go up against the Sentinel, something like that. So again, while this won't be my idealistic look for Rogue, it's a pretty solid Rogue figure. Now, moving on, we have the Master of Magnetism, Magneto, and his only, only accessories are a pair of hands. All those powers, all those whoa, 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 things that they give to Shocker and everybody else, well, that would have been in the, the perfect accessories for Magneto, don't you think? I mean, come on. The Master of Magnetism comes with no accessories. He does have a really nice head portrait, though. I like that they've kind of shadowed the eyes in there. That's pretty cool. Very evocative of the animation. One thing about this Magneto, and again, I missed the first release. I'm glad they redid it. I like the cape. It's just gummy enough, but it's also very sturdy. Overall, I do like this Magneto, but I do feel like he has unusually long arms or it's just an optical illusion because of the bands. But no, I really do think that he has long arms and he's much too skinny. I think that they should have beefed this Magneto up. Now, I do like these newly formed cuts right here for his underoos. I think that that looks pretty cool. The purples, the reds, for what paint is there, these are painted nicely. But I think that this one sorely lags out of the entire wave because of the lack of accessories, the lack of powers, something to bring Magneto to life. Perhaps a flight stand, right? Get him going, floating there, doing his magnetism powers. That would have been very cool to see. So that's kind of a missed opportunity. But again, I'm happy to have Magneto on my shelf, right? And which brings us to 
my favorite figure of the wave, which is, of course, Wolverine. And I love these claws right here. Very X-Men, the animated series. And for those wondering, yes, he always has those on his hands, whether he takes his gloves off or not. They're always there. That's where his claws pop out of in X-Men, the animated series. They're a lot more flexible. You're not going to really damage these unless you purposely damage them. I'll probably have to heat them up just to kind of reform them. They got a little warp in the box. But I like the way that these look. Very well done. Now, you do get a unmasked head portrait along with the unmask. And I like what they've done here. It's something we have seen before. But you're going to have to heat up that unmasked part to kind of drape it a little bit because it bunches up too high, right? It's just kind of form-fitted, so kind of stretch it out a little bit and make it work for you. And speaking of the unmasked head portrait, this is one of the best Logan Wolverine head portraits Marvel Legends has done. I love the way they did the hair. That's Logan, and he doesn't look like an old woman. Finally, we got it, right? Switch leads me to a really cool-looking Wolverine. Now, I have a ton of Wolverines in my collection. What's one more? But I like this updated look. It's very, again, evocative of the art that we're seeing for X-Men 97. Hold on one second. We got to we gotta do this right. Let's pop those claws. That looks pretty cool. The claws look good, whether or not they're popped or not. I like that they have those little rivet things on his gloves where the claws pop out, finally, unlike the VHS one. And he's got plenty of articulation movement with a bit of a more muted blue as I compared him to other figures in my collection. Don't worry, that is coming up. But I really like just the stability of this Wolverine. He's very cool and much like Magneto, he has those newly sculpted underoos that go all the way around. I do like that. I like that little touch. It's just something different. And he's just a very sturdy, very well done. Love the head portrait. Just overall, it's a killer Wolverine. And then just to show you the differences between prior released Wolverines, we have a more comic book Wolverine. We have the cell shaded Wolverine, which I actually really do like. I know a lot of people out there, oh, oh I can't like cell shading. Well, it's very, very well done for X-Men, the animated series. And then you have this new X-Men 97 one, which I like that they've kind of taken parts and pieces between each of them. It's entirely a different look for Wolverine, but it's very minute in the differences, if anything. But it's just a really cool looking Wolverine and I'm very happy to have it because it really does bring a lot to your collection. Perhaps you are a huge Marvel Legends fan, Marvel fan, or you just like the X-Men. These are essential X-Men characters for your shelf and it's really cool to see these done all in wave one because... Well, you have to get yourself flight stands, but you can have the two ladies hanging out, going to the mall, doing their thing, flying around. Always appreciated that. Wolverine versus Gambit. There you are, Wolverine, right? Right in the danger room. You can have a lot of fun with this. This is a wave with characters for everyone. Everyone knows and recognizes these, right? Perhaps I'll go in like this, huh? You can have a lot of fun. Although, it does add to your collection. If you have prior release figures like Morph, yeah. Sky's the limit. And just as a heads up, if you want to swap head portraits, if you have the cell shaded Wolverine, you will have some cell shading on the head, but he's got that growling look for going up against villains like Apocalypse. And speaking of which, for Cable to Bishop to Apocalypse, it's pretty darn cool. And I would say that, yeah, these all scale together fairly well. Some of the heights on these newer figures, like Magneto, for instance, I think, again, he's just entirely too small for what I think about for the character. But perhaps there was another misunderstanding from the future, right? <laughs> we can have Bishop once again going up against Gambit, right? And you can take a look inside Gambit's mind. Maybe you see some Ghost Rider. These will fit in with your Marvel Legends collection. They're not overly cartoony. But you see the difference between the two. And in having normal conversations about mutants and humanity, Professor X in his hover chair and this new Magneto will go together quite well. I really dig the way that these just meld, right? But knowing me, knowing my channel, Spider-Man the Animated Series is very near and dear to me. So this new Wolverine will go with the Spidey Animated and the prior released Beasts. And... 
just to kind of merge them all together. Even though this is not exactly X-Men, the animated series, it's also X-Men 97. Also, I need to open some of those VHS boxes and get a Cyclops or two going, you know what I mean? But, hey, Spider-Man was just looking for some helpful advice on his mutagenic nightmare. So, that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new wave of the Marvel Legends X-Men 97 line. That was a lot of fun, right? Pretty good characters overall. Yes, we're all going to have our nitpicks, but I have to say, make these characters a lot more evergreen. This was a solid lineup of characters. Everybody knows Wolverine, Gambit, Magneto, the like, right? Bishop might be hard sells from time to time. People may not know who he is, but Storm and Rogue, everybody knows those characters. Those are solid X-Men additions, and I'm really looking forward to Wave 2 now, and... I'm looking forward to just checking out X-Men 97. Fingers crossed. It's good. It's coming eventually. So whether or not you see this video beforehand, hey, hopefully it's good, right? But you've heard my thoughts. So now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything X-Men 97. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, whenever you get some time, go back. Check out that old X-Men, the animated series. It's still top notch. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.